How's everybody doing? Good. Welcome to the Weston. Welcome back to Savannah, Georgia, and welcome to our 11th annual ASP owners meeting. Uh, meetings are hard, right? That's no secret. That is actually taking the time to do the things that we normally do not do in our day. Meetings are hard. That's going the extra mile. That's taking the time to work on your business versus working in your business, and we know that. So we certainly thank you for your time and thank you for being here, making the time out of your schedule to work on your business. Uh, our staff, our agenda for the next two days, we know that, and we're putting our effort into that, so please know that. For many of you, this is your first meeting. For a lot of you, this is multiple meetings. For some of you, this is meeting number five, six, seven, eight as a veteran. So it's with that in mind that I'd like to ask, what meeting is this for you? So if you'll please stand, everybody stand. We get to get moving early on. If you've been to five or more ASP owners meetings, now I'll, I'll cheat and tell you, we've been in Savannah two years, Atlanta two years, and then we were in Charleston for a refresher. So if you've been to five or more ASP owners meetings, please have a seat. If you've been to four ASP owners meetings, please have a seat. If you've been to three, please have a seat. Two, please have a seat. For those of you still standing, this is your first ASP owners meeting and we'd like to all welcome you here. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Certainly a lot of effort to be here, we know that. Um, for those of you that have had multiple events that you've been to, it's two days of work, it's two days of fun, it's a lot of fellowship amongst your other owners, so please know that as you spend your next two days here. Take a look. Our first owners meeting in 2007. Some of you have seen this picture before. That was me and five owners. That's a thin and slender and stellar looking Jimmy Meese next to me <laughs> as I hold a crooked ASP sign and have duck boots on. Fast forward 10 years later, this company has come a tremendously long way both with what we do, with how we do it, with what we look like when we do it. We've continued to build that brand both on a global scale with what you're all doing in your markets individually, with what we're trying to do at the corporate office as well. Corporate office has come a tremendously long way. This same picture, if you look at where everybody is standing right there, if you fast forward to today, they're actually standing in between those two swimming pools right there. The training center has come a tremendously long way that so many of you have experienced and used. Thursday night, 10 years ago, that first meeting, we had one vendor stop by. The local SCP branch from around the corner came by. We had Fincher's Barbecue, a cooler of beer, and the next day we worked on things like marketing. I remember we talked about possibly getting something crazy like a website. And we talked about yellow page advertising. For those of you under 30, the yellow pages is this thing, <laughs> and you'd flip it, and it had businesses listed in it. If you fast forward business, scale and look at 10 years later something like the yellow pages it's amazing that it's completely non-existent and we've had to try to do our part uh, to keep up with that our vendors as well have done their part if you fast forward to today tonight's event is going to have over 20 pool professionals there representing over 20 different brands there will be 200 of us in that room tonight ASP franchise owners key employees and these key vendors that are here to support us and know how much effort we all put into this meeting. So thank you. If we think about it though, this meeting would be impossible, as would everything we do throughout the year without our franchising staff, our corporate staff, who last year at this meeting, if you'll remember, I spent so much time going over the core key elements of their roles, how their roles have developed, and how we've grown as a corporate staff. Uh, just like every year, it's with that in mind, I'd like to ask them, they love it when I do this, I'd like to ask them to come forward if they'll all do that at this moment, join us up here. Uh, this staff I asked over the past few months to keep up with their time that they spent on this year's owners meeting. Collectively as a group, this staff spent over 750, 
750 hours developing this year's owners meeting to make it what it is right now and it's with that in mind I'd like for all of us to thank them for that effort. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, thank you, John. That's right, Alan. They've got to blow the kisses when they get the standing ovation. Rich has not come yet to give those instructions. Now wait, a special thank you for anyone who is staying at the Westin that did not get their RSVP form in on time. Yes, there was one or two or twelve of you. And Shelly Smith, I believe, slept at the office for a week straight to make sure that we all are under one roof or very, very close. So thank you, Shelly. <clears throat> now, we have two new staff members that have joined our corporate team over the past 12 months. One is here, one is in bed with the flu. We asked him not to attend this year's meeting when we heard that yesterday. Mac Laskowski joined our team uh, a few months ago. So many of you in this room I know have already worked with Mac. Uh, he's a QuickBooks pro expert, he's an accountant, a budgeting guru, a numbers guy, and has already been a tremendous asset to try to help us and help all of you with your processes. And so Mac is a valuable team, we're sorry, member of our team, and we're sorry uh, that he can't be here today. Megan Cummings joined us almost a year ago. Megan, if you'll wave, so many of you have already worked with Megan. She came on board and hit the ground running from day one, a tremendous asset to our team handles shipping and receiving for business outfitting along with Tammy Taylor, handles daily office administration with Shelly, uh, has not been a task that has been asked of her that she has not completed ahead of schedule. Uh, and you all know uh, that that's what we strive for. So Megan fits in very, very well. Uh, thank you, Megan, for joining our team. And thank you all for being here. Thanks. <clears throat> now, for the first time ever at this meeting, I have the opportunity and excitement to be able to announce to you next year's meeting venue. As you all know, this is a year-long planning thing that we usually start planning right after this year's owner's meeting. This year we decided to start planning a little earlier, specifically so that we could work on a couple of things. What are we looking for? We want to go a little bit further south, right? We're chasing good weather in January as pool professionals. We wanted sunshine. We've gotten very, very fortunate the past two years that the Westin and Savannah has provided us this weather. But we felt like we could take advantage of that, go a little further south. We've got to find the right venue. If you think about it, the venue has to accomplish all kinds of things. They have to be able to house us and our group, multiple functions from vendor nights, parties, founders club dinners, multiple options that we've got to have. So we had to find the right venue and hotel pricing. The most important thing is what is it costing you each night to be there? And we found an option that fit all of these things. Sunshine, better venue or a fantastic venue, and almost 25% cheaper per night for a similar resort type experience. Next year's owner's meeting is going to be at sunny Destin, Florida. We're going to be at the San Destin Resort. I've asked our franchisee that is going to be hosting us, Mr. Ryan Island of ASP of Destin, to come up and speak, give us a couple words. He works with this venue on a regular basis, lives in Destin, uh, and he's going to come up and just share a couple of words about our, uh, our meeting next year. So please welcome Ryan Island up to the stage. <clears throat> Hello. By show of hands, how many people have been to Destin? How many, by show, let me do it in a different way. By show of hands, how many people have not been to Dustin? Okay, you're gonna love it. Um, it's, it's a huge area, We've, there's tons of restaurants, tons of bars, I mean, golf, we can line up golf, there's four courses there, shopping, um, fishing, all kinds of fishing, we can line up anything. So uh, we've had the, uh, the five meeting there, or some meetings there in the past, and uh, I think it's gonna be a great venue for us all. Um, tons of stuff to do outside of the meetings, but uh, be a good place to have it. Thanks, Ryan. Awesome. What's the temperature there today, Ryan? What's our weather like? It's uh, 65. Perfect. Perfect. So we've teased you with sunshine and with a great venue and with golf and all those things, the ocean for next year. Now I've got to reel you back in. We're in Savannah. 
we're, we're here at this year's owners meeting. Um, so what to expect from here? Mr. Uh, Rich Allen is back with us this year to MC our event as he has done for the past several years. Rich comes to us as a business consultant. Uh, meeting planner such as this can help us keep the event going in a smooth manner. We've got so many moving parts uh, and Rich has been a tremendous asset to us over the years. We also are bringing in a keynote speaker this year, Mr. Kevin Brown. Kevin's tremendous, uh, speaks all over the world and is really going to speak to us on people, the power of people, the hero effect, uh, and he'll be getting in this evening and will be here with us all day tomorrow. Uh, but that's really going to be something that, that we take up a notch this year is, is that keynote speaker. Uh, so we're excited. Please welcome him when you see him. Mostly excited to announce this year's theme, which we shot out a week ago for everybody to be thinking about. People, processes, and profit. I want to speak on that for the next few minutes. I actually want to take this a different direction than I usually do. Instead of this just being a welcome, this is going to be a welcome mixed in with a part keynote, mixed in with a part State of the Union. People, processes, and profit. That's the theme of this year's meeting. As we talk about how that relates to a State of the Union, the State of the Union is my time to really kind of elevate to 10,000 feet and look down how did the numbers fall for 2017, how did our company look as a whole. One of the most important elements of those numbers we look at are our top 5 and 10 and 15 locations to see that metrics, how did they do from a static standpoint again, how did they do the next year, and so that's what we're looking at. As you all know, I'm big into the numbers. I'm big into the processes. How did 2017 numbers look? Let's do this by a show of bodies. If you did $500,000 or more in revenue, please stand. Key employees and owners, please stand. Nice. Over 30, this is 32 owners representing this number. Now, follow me here. I'm going to ask you to sit one at a time. If you did $750,000 or more in revenue, please remain standing. If you did $1 million or more in revenue, please remain standing. First of all, one of my favorite stats is to show how many locations, 12 this year, broke the million dollar mark to those 12 locations. Six new ones. Six new ones, that's awesome. 1.5 million or more in revenue. If you did 2 million or more in revenue, please stay standing. Ladies and gentlemen, these are your $2 million men and women. Thank you very much. That's incredible. ASP of Destin, Chattanooga, Ocala, and Dallas all surpassed that $2 million mark. It was just two years ago that we had ASP of Dallas break the $2 million mark as the $2 million location, and now we had four more join. That's incredible. 2017, our top performers, if we look at just that number, again, we take a look at that to see how did just that group do from one year to the next year. Year after year after year, we have been able to announce this top five are growing again by double digits. The top five again in 2017 grew by 13%. Take it a step further. The top 10 grew by 15%. The top 15 grew by 13%. And as a company overall, we grew by 18, almost 19% in 2017. Our brand continued to grow because of this. Every $100,000 of revenue as a company that we grow by, we grow by another truck on the road. More brand material is in everyone's hands. We almost doubled the amount of branded material and truck wrapping that was done in 2017 over 2016 because of the brand fund initiative. We almost doubled the amount of ASP stuff that's out on the road and in your customers' hands. Growing the name and the brand in each of your markets was a key initiative for us in 2017, and we did that. Now, you all know 2017, that's over, right? We like to look ahead. Budgeting, forecasting is so important at this point. We are in 2018. 
It's January. It's almost February. We're in the year. So many of you have gone through the important process of budgeting, forecasting, looking at your plan ahead and your roadmap. In the 2018 year, if you are going to do $500,000 or more in revenue, please stand. In 2018, if you're going to do $500,000 or more in revenue, please stand. This is now 43 locations that are standing, not 32. This is $41 million of revenue in those folks that are now standing that are going to do between $500,000 and $3.1 million in revenue. And at an average company net profit margin, this is over $7 million of profit that's just standing. 2018 is here. I look forward to watching you grow. Thank you. People, processes, and profit are the only way that those in this room are continuing to grow double digit year over year, especially the top performers, those locations that are growing one million, million and a half, two million dollar businesses by double digits. The most important thing that they could work on are people, processes, and profit. Jimmy Meese brought this similar concept to me a few months ago as we were thinking about themes for the owners meeting. And we talked about people, processes, and product. I'll show you a clip in a moment from Marcus Lemonis, the prophet, who speaks on that. And we changed it a little bit to make it people, processes, and profit to integrate it with what we all are working on as a company almost every day. But I want to mention one thing. Remember, old meeting themes do not die. Two years ago, we worked on the theme ASP, leaders leading the pool industry. I delivered a keynote speech around a, a book that so many of you know, The Seven Habits. I did a keynote on The Seven Habits of the Highly Effective ASP Leader. Because at the time, so many of you were hiring your second and third and fourth employee and you were building teams. We talked about leadership. Last year, if you'll remember, we talked for two days about going from good to great and how our own company was doing that by innovating and growing and growing the brand and changing the swimming pool industry. This year's theme, People, Processes, and Profit. Just remember as a side note, old meeting themes do not die. They don't end. Going from good to great does not end today because we've got a new meeting theme that we work on. Working on becoming a great leader inside your own organization does not go away just because it was two years ago's theme. People, processes, and profit are just what we're going to work on during these two days while also working on being great, while also working on leadership. So just remember that. When it comes to people, processes, and profit and how we came up with it for this year's meeting, I pulled a clip out uh, from an interview with Marcus Lemonis, uh, and I wanted to share that with you. If you want to be successful in business, there's only three things I want you to focus on. People, process, and product. Determine if you have the right people and if you're motivating them and managing them the right way. Look at your process and determine, is it streamlined? Is it efficient? Can you get better? And look at your product. Because even if your product is good today, I don't want to find out that it's obsolete tomorrow. Are you hiring the right people? Are you motivating them the right way? Are you constantly analyzing your process? That's something that he goes over on almost every show with every business that he invests in or that works on. Um, that's what we felt like we could integrate in this year's meeting theme. That's also what we feel like the top franchise, franchises in this room work on on a regular basis and so many of you work so hard on that. You all know the franchisee of the year is traditionally an award we give out tomorrow night at the party. You know it's traditionally an award we go over tomorrow during Tom's section. I want to integrate it into mine and open the meeting up with it because that's how important this year's theme is. That's how relevant this year's theme is in the franchisee of the year and the candidates and the businesses that they run. So let's do that. If I call your name forward, I ask you to please join me on this stage and we'll spend a few minutes talking about your business. These are your nominations for franchisee of the year in alphabetical order. ASP of Chattanooga, Tennessee. John, please come up. All the way up. ASP of Longview, Texas. Rick, please join us. Congratulations. 
Rick, please join us up here. ASP of Nashville, Tennessee. John, please join us. ASP of Shreveport, Louisiana, John, again, please join us, John. Three Johns. Congratulations, John. Good to see you. Join us. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. These gentlemen all embody the same trait, which is pretty unique to this year's theme. And this is why they're all standing here. As we thought about our nominees this year, and there's several other more that could be standing on this stage, I promise you. But all four of these individuals, people, processes, and profit are worked on constantly. Constantly. Let's test them for a minute, though. You know I love to run over the numbers and see if they do, too. John, on the end, and I'm going to also re reference their location names since, by the way, we have three Johns on stage and one Rick. John, on the end, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Highlight for us your 2017 revenue and 2018 projected revenue, please, sir. Thank you. Rick? 762 and 2018 will be? 1.1 question mark or exclamation point? <laughs> exclamation point. Got it. Next, John. Uh, we did 2017 1.13 uh, and uh, 2018 projected to do 1.3. Thank you. 1.3. John. Beautiful. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, how cruel was it that I had those numbers in front of us on the next screen? I forgot to flip to it. Uh, Chattanooga has increased from their projected uh, Longview, Nashville, and Shreveport. These gentlemen all have the unique DNA inside of their business that I felt like as we analyzed all of the candidates for this year, if they embodied people, process, and profit. As I highlight that a couple of ways, John has his brother in business with him, Peter, who for some reason is still sitting in the audience. Peter run, owns and operates this business with John. Peter, I give you permission to come up front, please, and join John up here on stage and congratulate you as well. They run this business together uh, as a team, and they do not have employees that work alongside them. They've got two team members, two of them are here today. These two gentlemen are absolutely top tier in the company. When Tom and I went up to Chattanooga a few weeks ago for the end of the year meeting and to highlight the fact that they hit two million in revenue, it was not just with John and Peter, but it was with their top two employees, their team members that helped from the process standpoint. And so their people are integrated with their processes and that's something to think about. That's how you're going to continue on this growth path. Rick in Longview runs the business with his wife, Holly. Is Holly here? She's here but not here. Smart woman. One, to go from 700 and some odd thousand to over a million dollars in revenue, husband and wife team that's going to grow by 50% on top of their biggest year, only by putting in the right people and working on the processes, embodying the brand, and continuing to grow. It's very impressive. John? in Nashville continues to work on the team as well. He has a husband and wife combo that's service manager and office manager. Embodying the team, embodying that process that he's worked on over the past four years, doubling revenue year after year after year, leaping over the one million dollar mark at this point. No coincidence standing next to him. John as well in Shreveport has a husband and wife team, service manager and office manager. John nominated his office manager for employee of the year this year. John in Chattanooga also has an employee of the year this year nominated. It's all of these common themes that are woven together in these gentlemen's organization that have them standing in front of you right now. And it's with that in mind that I'll tell you the 2017 franchisee of the year will again be announced tomorrow night at the party. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Good job.
Thanks. Good job. <laughs> Lastly, we spent a lot of time amongst those groups right there talking about people and talking about processes. Lastly, is the dreaded P word for some of you in this room is profit. I'll open with Marcus's thoughts. The best advice I can give a business owner today is to know their numbers. To not have a solid understanding of how much you make, and how much you sell, and how much inventory you have is a crime. To not understand how to make decisions based on numbers is a big mistake. Too often business owners are making decisions based on their gut. As you look at your financial statement on a monthly basis or even a weekly basis, it's the roadmap to success. The roadmap being the key word there that we've talked about so many times from a game plan standpoint and knowing your numbers and having the ability to understand your business. All of those owners that were just standing up here embody that as well. Of those owners, I probably worked closest with John in Chattanooga, uh, who pointed out on the way down that that was a typo of 2.4, not the 2.2. I take full responsibility for that. Uh, and he knows his numbers and works on those as hard as anyone. And that is the common theme on our calls that we have on a regular basis. And I know for some of you in this room as well, on your calls that you have, elevates beyond talking about the people and the processes and elevates to the profit. And what happens to that profit? That's the most important thing in your business. It's what happens from the profit on paper going into the cash that flows into your pocket. This is the beginning of a keynote that I gave five years ago at this meeting where we found so many of our middle and upper middle locations were really growing year after year but they were struggling with how to take their profit on paper and put it into their pocket. And so I tried to come up with a formula and with a way during my keynote to shed some light on what I thought about profit as it relates to cash flow and cash flow as it relates to profit. And I came up with a formula. Cash flow equals profit plus or minus your people and your processes. Think about that for just a minute. You've got to think about it. And there were several of you in this room I can recall specifically talking to me after that meeting about how impactful that formula was on you when you went back and analyzed it into your business. Your cash flow that goes into your pocket is not just equal to your profit that you, own, that you show on paper. It's how well your people and your processes impact the profit which impacts the cash that flows into your pocket. If you remember that keynote, for those of you that were there, I gave the example of the widget in our business. Let's use O-Ring. You get a call. You've got a service call. O-Ring's leaking on top of the filter. You send your service manager to that job. On the way there, he stops by SCP and he picks up an O-Ring for that filter. Pops in his head that he's done this service call many, many times before, and while he's there, he's going to pick up a couple extra O-Rings. That $100 O-ring job that you're going to do should have a $10 O-ring cost in it. You should make about 90 bucks. Service manager picks up three O-rings while he's there. He's got one to put on the job, and he's got two that he's going to hang on to for the next time he needs it, right? Hops in his truck, throws his SCP ticket on the seat next to him, throws those other two O-rings. One of them he keeps in his lap. The other two go on the seat. A few days later, they've fallen down on the floorboard. A few days after that, they've got the Burger King wrappers on top of them and they've been stepped on. He goes to clean out his truck about two weeks later and he just kind of takes the mat and he dumps it in the trash can. Two O-rings go with it. That one service call job that you had that was $100 no longer had a $10 cost associated with it, did it? It had a $30 cost associated with it because those other two O-rings weren't accounted for. The office manager took the SCP tickets because she's got a stack of them. They're real high, and she's just got to hammer them and get them in the computer. So we enter that data in. Service manager didn't write which ticket goes with which job. O-rings, just 10 bucks. It just got entered in. Who gets paid at the end of the month? I promise you, SCP. You paid for all three of the O-rings. Two of them are in the trash can. Cash flow. The amount of money that you can put into your pocket does not just equal your profit that you show on paper. On paper, you made 90 bucks. 
the cash that went into your pocket was 70 at best. Cash flow equals profit plus or minus how you handle your time management and your people and your processes inside of your business on everything that you do, all the way down to a $10 O-ring. That $10 O-ring could also be a $1,000 salt system. Just add a couple zeros. The concept is the exact same. That's why over this next day and a half, we want to work on our people, our processes, and our profit. It's with that in mind that I conclude my welcome slash State of the Union slash Franchisee of the Year introduction slash keynote. And I want to turn the meeting over to Mr. Rich Allen. Thank you all for being here.